Now we're looking at the 1500 area. The traits, the attributes of a 1500 in general. It's a massive generalization, but like we did with the 1300, we're looking at developing our own evaluation gauge bar of what we would expect for like a 1500 type player. So they've already started this particular game here. We've got them on watch. Hopefully we can flick through and see each of the games um, throughout this uh, session. So in my head, what makes up a 1500, as I've always said, you've got to make your own mind up as to what you think a 1500 should be, not rely on Wiki Wikipedia or, or anything online, instructors, grandmasters telling you what they think. You have to develop your own so that when you do come into a game facing these levels, you have a certain type of expectation. And when that expectation isn't met because there's shock factors and they're playing too good, then you know that they're playing too good. So then you can either change your game or accept that you're being totally outclassed. But initially, your own expectations help you to then ground what you do within the game and the characteristics of the person. You can sort of like try and upset their rhythm if you like so in my head what makes up a 1500 well they know how to play the game they basically don't really like attacking they'll sit back more than attack even a worse case than the actual um 1400 so now they're thinking more in terms of yes mistake to take gonna sit back gonna let the opponent come to me if i am going to attack i'm going to do what i believe are combination attacks but what falls short is they'll probably support their attack with one or two pieces but then they'll kind of forget that the rest of their pieces need to be involved in that attack process as well so positionally it won't be as good as what they believe it is so then they'll have gaping holes that the opponent can potentially take advantage of the plus side to their um, attack process we'll start now the plus side to their attack process is that they can look very menacing and those one two combinations can be quite powerful if the opponent doesn't know how to deal with them but if you can weather the one two combination you're going to be okay so let's have a look at this 1500 here so now he's come out with a soft opening like we said they sort of like just like to sort of maybe keep the tension even worse than the 1400 but in this case he had a bit of a fork on the bishop so this opponent 1500 as well so the ball 1500s um has allowed the opponent to actually grasp that pawn and hold the center with the knight which is fairly okay he's probably going to want to move his bishop so this this pawn can come and attack this knight but he is developing and at least they've castled this time so that's a massive difference but now he's actually gone off and started an attack process without actually castling so he's showing traits of a 1300 because he's, he's actually attacking he's in the war and he's not sorted his bed out yet he could pay the price for that he's, it looks like he's gonna have tempo to go on castle yes there we go so now they've got the two bishops so it was a frenzied attack and now he's got the doubled pawns here so the one two attack this is the ethos for 1500 their combination attack one two and like we said then they lose out in terms of um position after that one two attack it's gone for a simple exchange of the queen here so he's developing his bishop so single that's just like a single attack it's it's like an advanced version of the 1400 it can look really menacing but positionally it's still got a long way to go so he's pushed here for a platform to attack the bishop here and then obviously this bishop wants to come out at some stage it's attacking the rook so the rook moves so it's all single attacks at the minute as we can see he's got his pieces out but nothing's working together these rooks aren't working together his rooks aren't working together who wants to own the file somebody's got to take that chance 
Now his rook is in the center of the board, he could potentially lose tempo in owning the file with the dishevelment of his rook here. That's, that might cost them. The opponent's pr probably not taking advantage. He's attacking a piece that's got a defender on it. Why would you do that? I'm not too sure. That's not very clear to me because now he can attack it. Doesn't have to, he can push past with his linked pawns. Then he's got this movement coming here. He's got to take with the rook really because he didn't want to get pinned from the rook. So it takes, takes. Now the rook comes down here for this pawn. Bishop comes back and defends. It's, all, it's almost petering out to be a draw. Both players not really exacting um, dynamic attacks per se. The one-two type punch thing has been done by both of them. And after that, it's like, well, what do we do? So it's the case in point, I think, what, I'm, what I was explaining that, yeah, if you can weather their one-two punch, then it either peters out to a draw or they kind of lose their balance and you can take advantage of um, the gaping holes that they leave for you. So this is really a draw at this moment in time. Um, the only way either black can win or white can win, because it's like a draw to me, um, is if they make an egregious, massive mistake. Now, do I like, which pawn structure do I like out of these? I think I would prefer, well, not now, but I would prefer white because now the bishop has got the diagonal here. So he's controlling this area because this was quite strong if he'd worked it well, got his rook here, worked his own bishop into here to defend this area. But he didn't do that. He brought his king down and that let black in. So that was the stronghold there. This is now weak for white because obviously he's simply just taking the pawn, putting a check on the king. So he's um, he should win out here, black. And he's given up his bishop. <sighs> So yeah, interesting situation. The Whites 1500 did their one-two punch. Like I said, positionally, they always seem to kind of struggle with position play, especially towards the end game. Just like the 1400, 1400 likes the end game, but single attacks don't help their position. 1500s, they know how to do with the attacks. The one-two type attacks are there, but like the 1400s, their position doesn't leave them much hope or much scope to do much else and we're kind of seeing this in this particular game as we're speaking and um, losing the advantages again i mean he's probably coming back to attack this pawn this pawn is protected now black is looking to try and get this pawn down i don't think they can personally uh, he's got a dark square bishop this pawn isn't getting down really I mean, he's just going to come here. How, is, how does he think he's actually getting this rook? Maybe looking to try and get this pawn, but I don't think that's happening somehow. So this pawn's gone. So it's a slow process now of taking all these pawns off. If white had defended this area, this would really have been a stronghold for them. And they, they would have been blasting down, taking black's pawns off. But they, I don't think there's any way of them catching back up now at all. Bishop's just way too strong. He's looking to push the pawn, but the king can just simply come here. What what else does he do? He comes down, but then the pawn gets taken. But it's a good effort. It's a good effort. It's just that it's too late to the party. And it's realizing the strengths of the areas that you've got. And the only thing that let white down in that, it was a it was a draw, but then we pointed out that this particular area could actually give them a win. So we'll probably, well, I don't know if we'll have time to look at the evaluation because it'll probably jump on to the next game. So he's come down for the exchange. So basically he's playing give up. Oh, no, he's not, sorry. Black's attacked. So it just comes back up and takes. Um, I'm surprised um, why it's not um, resigned now because there's no way that he's making any inroads with Black here. Yeah. You can simply push now and stuff like that. We'll just go here. This one's all over. He's too close now. The pawn. He could push the pawn, but he's now just attacking. It's knowing about end games as well. Um, I mean, this is that wasn't really a too impressive end game. It's um, it, you know, 
but end games are the death knell of like the 1400s the 1500s and the 1300s so practicing the end game type methodology the pattern recognition those types of things i'm steering away from saying tactics because if you own i would say practice tactics on your own games rather than practicing tactics on other people's games because what i found was I don't end up in the types of positions that they show in the books or um, online, you know, when you do your practicing. I'll, I'll sit there and go, yeah, but I wouldn't be in this position and I wouldn't move like that. So if you get the opportunity, a little hint and tip to help develop your own game, do tactics on your past games that you've played in the last year and just use the evaluation tool or whatever, you know, basically to say, well, okay, what move would I make now? Now that I know, I've developed a little bit more, what move would I actually make now instead of the move that you did make? And just do comparisons and that's the way that I would say to do tactics training to help improve your personal game, not a grandmaster's game that was year dot or whatever. Um, Practising tactics in your own games. So this one here. Um, I keep talking through but there's there's key points that I'm really wanting to get out because a lot I know a lot of people are told oh yeah do tactics training tactics training but you can get good at doing those but then when you actually come in to actually play a live game you, you can't really put it into place because you don't move like the, the masters move or whoever 1900 1800 whatever player how you don't know you don't move like them so you might as well just do tactics training of your own so he's targeting loose rook here and again no focus on castling at this moment in time still looking to go for the war i think he's probably queenside castling and but he's queen has queenside castling into all his pieces so is that right and he's moved his bishop again no castling no castling yep so as we've noticed from the 1300s 1400s and 1500 it's they're doing the same thing not castling i would say it's more apparent in the definitely in the 1300s and i think it generally kind for me it generally kind of skips the 1400 even though they still do it but they don't do it as badly as the 1300s and the 1500s think they're being clever so they don't castle so it skips a kind of stage from what i've experienced yeah, 1300s definitely no castling um, 1400s they attempt to do the castling type thing because they realise that it's, it's a wise thing to do and then the 1500s all of a sudden um, castling seems to disappear and sometimes they rush to get there too quickly and then they get themselves in trouble or they definitely aren't castling at all so this is a massive case in point here it's too arty and as I've probably mentioned before it's like watching probably watching grandmasters or ims or whatever and then you know they're not castling so they're probably taking a leaf out of their book going well I'm not going to castle too early because you know then those come swarming me but then if you don't castle at all or it it doesn't even have to be the normal version of castling is your king safe that is the question you know you have to support your king and just leaving it in the center of the board really is quite dangerous so who's going to lose out out of these out of these non-castled kings it's a tall order because now black definitely can't castle he's moved both his rooks he must be at some stage going castling king's side no so from this game here we've not paid much attention to it we just looked at the pattern of the game and they're going to pay the price for not actually castling or king, you know, keeping their king safe. This must be some type of new age type practice, you know, where oh well, no point in castling, but it's terrible. It is absolutely terrible. It's a bad practice to get into. It's a failing system. This game really is just about who is going to win the non-castling situation. It doesn't look good. It's not. I wouldn't even call it ugly because I play ugly chess. Um, but I play ugly chess with the idea of trying to be, make sure I'm doing things appropriate. This stuff here is like too fancy and it's too arty 
and that's when you get caught short when you're playing somebody who knows basics and plays the basics properly they're not playing the basics properly so he's moved his king now so he's like classing that as like a virtual castle because he's linked up his rooks now his king is here it's on a white square so he's feeling it's safe but it's not really because it's still got like a harsh diagonal against it white's um, taking advantage of this so now the bishop has to move so now he's going to lose a bit of tempo but he's going to own the file is black with the rook if the rook takes so you could probably see the king moving up and he's gone queenside castling anyway so he's not got as many pieces coming down towards the king now on the black side but it just doesn't look like anybody really has a grip on the game you know because of that non-castling aspect you know that's like the the basis for the structure of your game and it just like we're going to have like a probably a stale stalemate session going on here now could not expect this but that he's not probably going to do that because he's doubling his pawns but he's on the night but no nah, it's not happening straight exchange it's all a little bit of a to me it's a bit it's a bit messy it's not it's not even it's not even ugly like i said it's all very below basic standard for 1500 type things um it's really good this knight it's got a nice position in the center of the board it's always nice to have the knight in the center of the board usually they don't take with the bishops because you know the bishops are precious so he's probably looking to attack the queen but then this pawn can just drop quite nicely here so it's all simplified stuff he's going for a cheapie with the bishop giving them something to think about so he wants to come here anyway so that stops the bishop attacking here so it's all it's not clear you know queen could be looking to come here but that's the only place it can go to what's it going to do slide over try and get this pawn yeah it's not it's not meaty enough i mean these are just all pfft, blah moves that's what i'll say blah moves it needs to be careful not pushing this one obviously so he's taking the knight and again it looks like it's going to peter out into a draw type thing in 1500s again this is what i'm saying if you can weather the storm of their one two punch type situation then you either get this draw position or they over egg themselves and then you take advantage like in the previous game so this is pretty much similar to the last game So the idea, I mean, it's probably looking for this and then coming for the bishop here, just, um, but it's not meaty, but what would I say? Let's say now, who who would be winning? Why it looks like it's potentially winning here in this position with the potential for that, but I think because 1500s don't really like taking pieces unless, of course, it's like, um, it's a safe move. It, it <laughs> They can get fancy and arty, but they're not as drastic as the 1400s. So he's allowed the pawn to get taken. Um, I'm surprised he actually took, though, because block, bringing it up here would have given him, like, a nice position for a potential pass pawn in the future. Bishop coming here, sitting there quite nicely. It's just sitting waiting for. So he's bringing the queen here for a check on the king. Also attacking the pawn, but the big queen is supporting here. But he's trying to start some process towards his king. White probably has the better position ish because the that the black's white bishop doesn't have anything to actually go for. So probably making a space here to make it a little bit more active might be appropriate. I'll just bring the bishop here actually. That's probably better and it's like stopping this type of stuff. So now looks like white's aware of that so he's not even attempted to go there. So now this pawn needs to be protected by the queen. Oh my dears. So the queen's babysitting that, that pawn. This bishop could come back and defend whilst this queen. Now it's all locked up. Now I'm giving it to Black because he has these double pawns in the centre here and he could open that up a little bit if he worked it correctly. Not, oh, <laughs> I was going to move it there then. Um, yeah, if he can uh, sort it correctly because he's got these double pawns which he can push down here, start opening up the centre and these two are linked. 
so he's now trying to force his way up he's got three pawns against two so that potentially is faster than this central attack that black is going to come to here so i think he'd probably be happy taking there because if he comes here oh mind you no he won't be so i'll probably bring it back oh he's going for a draw yeah that's not it's not the same anymore because he can take and take and then the oh sorry i'm wrong i'm wrong that yeah it still works yeah because if he takes then we take and then pushes here there and then he can push past and go oh he's locked himself <laughs> he's locked himself down oh dear give me strength so this is the power base now black is um, winning really I don't think there's anything else he can do about that there's no point even coming here because this is going to happen sorry so he's got threats on both sides or well yeah both and in the centre it's too much for white to actually hold way too arty and not enough dynamic attack build really for 1500s build on the 1-2 combination that seems to be ingrained in that sort of generalised group of um, ratings and just keep the momentum going for the the one two so go for like a four combination and even push it to five but I, I like going up to four you know doing like a four calculation and yeah and just see how it goes from there because they have the knowledge they have the skills it's just then the fear element comes in when they go one two and then they just kind of sit back have a look keep the tension and then lose the advantage that they're created and all in all don't lose tempo by not actually castling the king doesn't want to have to work it will work when it comes to the end game not when in the middle game and even in the opening so get it safe and then you can start utilizing the skills that you've learned f for your 1500 rating by basically just focusing on those key areas castle appropriate castling even if it's not traditional castling make sure that your king is safe yep that's the key thing don't leave it in the center of the board don't leave it at the starting point yeah do something with your king first then you can go to war with your one two three four combination not your one two combination one two three four calculate four moves at least yep and then find the potential value within those calculations to make the appropriate moves as we've seen in both of these two games that were on the 1500 it's ended up in a drawish type looking position because both players ended up playing I'll, go, I'll say safe you know not wanting to over egg keeping that tension after their one two um, um, punch dried out but if one of them had continued their one two combination attack with supporting their pieces with the king being in an appropriate position you'd see a different result and they'd probably enjoy the games more because now the queen the queen is just chasing the king around um, it's looking for a draw and it probably might get the draw because now it's been released it's just going for repetition if he takes the queen off the board the king's in a good place to block off so that's quite nice so he can just constantly keep checking but he's got to be wary he's probably wanting to get his king down here so it's always nice chasing the king around but then suddenly when it all stops because you've got no more checks on a bit like what's happening now so he's probably considering taking the pawn because that's the power base with him having these three pawns here that's what's causing him the issue so he could actually take rather than going uh, now he's got the space because he's on a dark square so he's going to get repetition I think he's going for a draw he may as well do in this game Ooh, wow okay so these pawns might still cause problems but his king is highly elevated so I think he can take the queen take the queen holy shamana why don't they listen to what I'm saying oh god if he takes he's got a passer the king's not getting across to help got a nice check nice 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 okay 
so it's looking good for them it's looking good okay so don't listen to me then after all take oh, okay that one whichever one he seems to have found the upper hand so that was good that was a nice spot then wasn't it he's now taking off the pawns and oh and black's resigned well done so he got lucky there in the end nice positional player with the queen I was thinking just um, go for the draw or something <laughs> excellent um, but he could have gone for the draw as well but he found a little bit more sting in his punch but it wasn't a combination it was just a single move with a queen type thing so all the other all the other pieces of the concepts that we talked about need to be in place I think if like 1500s want to get a little bit better um, to avoid this type of ending um, where it's basically almost drawish for a long period of time um, like this game and the game before really have to knuckle down and castle really have to knuckle down and get the one two three four combination going and really be more dynamic and continue the attacks that you've built up with support from your pieces it'll be a lot better and that would differentiate you from definitely from the traits of the 1300 and definitely the traits of the 1400 and once you get that, that split then you're clearer as to what you understand as um, what you expect from those types of ratings it's pretty di it's quite difficult it, for me I, I understand what I'm talking about um, it has made a big difference in my understanding of what chess is how to play it and how to develop as I'm going through um, I wonder if the tournament's finished or not. Has it finished? Um, well, we'll pause just to see what's happening. Okay, so I'll take a look at another um, 1500. That other one left. So let's uh, do, 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 see what's happening here. Oh, they're moving a bit quick, so I might not be able to catch up with them. So he's got an attack on the king, so that's supported by the queen. That looks fairly nice and clean. Look at this king, though. Yeah? And we've only just jumped into the game. No castling. And he's done a king move in this position. I don't, well, <laughs> am I missing something? So he's gone here. So he's moved his king up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't laugh. But, um somebody would need to, someone would need to explain to me why you would move your king into the center of the board at, at this stage of the game and also this is a 1600 and they haven't castled either and now they're kind of paying the price for not having castled we're seeing this quite regularly i'm not making this up i'm just watching these guys play and we're seeing this same pattern of no castling Whoever's teaching these guys how to do this no castling thing genuinely needs to knock it on the head because it's not safe and it you can't be enjoying your game when your king's stuck in the middle of the board or it's stuck in the back or it's stuck in the centre on the back um, and it's not fully protected. Um, that It genuinely can really hurt your game. It's not impressive to me at all. Wow. This is why we've got loads of thumbnails about, you know, protecting your king, you know, support your king, you know, castling. It's, it's a key thing. It's totally missed. <laughs> but as well, in order to help formulate your attacks, if your king is tucked away safe somewhere, you don't have to then think about um, the king after that. But whilst it's in the middle of the board, you're constantly thinking, well, can his piece attack my king? Can this attack my king? And by the time you thought of that, you've lost tempi and you're not really attacking properly. And that what well, that's what prevents the likes of like the 1500s pushing forward because they've not castled early enough or appropriately. And then when they've done their one-two attack, because their king isn't castled, they're then having to think, oh, I better think about my king. So that's when their one-two attack stops. And then if the opponent's smart they'll take advantage of that pause and their weakness in terms of their position of their king 
so that's what sparks like for the 1300s that's what sparks the um retreat in a sense the acknowledgement that oh my king is in a bit of trouble so i have to defend it but by then it's too late so then they're caught short so then their game changes so they have to then readjust so all that readjustment change etc causes them not to be as a, as best performing as they would like to be because they're just constantly looking to defend the king when if they'd have defended the king by castling appropriately early on they could get on with some fantastic chess play have i said it enough castle king safety one or the other they've really gone into the tank on this i don't understand what that king move was <laughs> oh i'll tell you what it was right it's to allow the bishop to come out okay that that is to allow the bishop to come out but why here? <laughs> you, you'd think it'd probably want to come back here, wouldn't you, or something, and then bring the bishop out or something. <laughs> I don't know. I'll never understand. That's surreal. But we've been talking about white for so long that um, the same issue is here for black. This is why they're taking so long. Um, but is there something he can do he could no not really well psh, no not really because then the knight can take pawn takes queen takes so he's not going to go there but he still can go here he's got something to do is there a problem with his knight coming here just blocking off that center a little bit giving the king a little bit of a protected area here <laughs> type thing get the rook out and then maybe bring the king back or just leave it here that's what I, I would envisage happening. But they're probably thinking, well, he's brought his king into the center of the board. How do I get it to his king? Let me do something that is unrelated to protecting my king. Something happened. Oh, something's flicking backwards and forwards. The time's flicking backwards and forwards. Huh? And there's no moves on the board. That's weird. Whoa, that's weird. Are they doing some clock switching thing or whatever they call it? Is there some sort of virus thing going on? Oh, I think there is, you know. I think somebody's messing with the clock. <laughs> 